People's Church, Newton Abbey. Thank you for tuning in, brothers and sisters. And if you're from another church, uh, please stay with us and enjoy our breaking of bread service this morning. We begin our service with the tragic news of the sudden passing of Jim Morrison, a loved brother and friend of the People's Church, Newton Abbey, a faithful servant over the years that he's been with us from day one. But we also pray for Myrtle and the family as well. And the family, the funeral's tomorrow at 9.45 and uh, it's a private funeral. But if you want to know any further details, uh, contact Janice, Myrtle's sister. We know where Jim has gone. We know where Jim is. He's with the Lord. And you know, while he's gone to be with the Lord, we're going to remember the Lord just now. We're going to come around this table and we're going to remember what he done for us on the cross at Calvary and at the empty tomb and also in our own personal lives and as a church. We have a lot to be thankful for. And I look back and I say, thank God for Jim Morrison and his service to the king, uh, to his family, and also to the kingdom of God here at the People's Church Newton Abbey. So we're going to come around the Lord's table. The same night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take it. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup was the new covenant shed for many in my blood for the remission or forgiveness of sins. For as so often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Paul says, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Aren't you glad he's coming? Aren't you glad the king is coming? The world's a mess, but the king is coming. We have a lot to celebrate today. In spite of our tragedies, we know that the king is coming. And he's coming for those who have put their trust in him. So let's remember him this morning. Let's worship him. Just take time out just now and stop everything. And just let our thoughts be about him. Let's go back to Calvary. Let's see what he did. He took bread. Bread speaks of the symbol of his body given for us on that cross where he suffered, bled and died. He gave his life that we might live. Let's remember him. He took the bread. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for giving your Son. We love you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, from the depths of our souls. He also took the cup, his blood shed for many, for the forgiveness of sins. This is a symbol of the blood of Jesus that he shed on that cross, that we may be cleansed from our filthy sins and saved by his amazing grace. He took the cup. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nobody like Jesus. You're beautiful beyond description, Lord. We love you with everything we have, Lord. Bless your name. Folks, just tell him how much you love him, just for a few moments. Lift your voice, wherever you are. Lift your voice. Lift your voice to heaven. Doesn't matter who's listening to you. Lift your voice to heaven. Praise him in English. Praise him in heavenly languages. Worship the king. And the beauty of holiness. Thank him for his sacrifice, for his love, for his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're beautiful, Lord. 
you're wonderful. There's nobody like you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus, man of sorrows, thank you, Father. Thank you for your Son. Bless his holy name. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. And even comforting in us. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't you love him? I love Jesus. I love him with everything I have. I pray you'll love him too. And express that love in your worship, in your witness, and in your work for him, wherever he places you. Praise be to God. Shout hallelujah. 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 The king is alive. We're going to have another song just now, a worship song. How deep the father's love for us. You know, that's amazing how deep the Father's love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's listen and worship along with how deep the Father's love for us. Thank you. 
Boy, what a song. It just melts the heart. I will not boast in anything, but I will boast in Jesus Christ. What a saviour. What love. Thank you for that worship song. Now, we're going to come to the word of God. And just before we come, I just want to wish Maisie Largham happy 80th birthday the day. She's 80. My goodness, we Maisie is 80. We have had her for over the years from the day one. And she's tortured us, annoyed us and pestered us. But I have to say, she's blessed us with her love, her humour and her support. So it's in sad years, tragedy with Jim. And here's joy with Maisie. So may you have a good day today. Come on, let's read the scriptures. And here's the title. Living in the light of Christ's coming. Living in the light of Christ's coming. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm reading this because uh, with the passing of Jim Morrison so suddenly and also having officiated at three funerals in the last two to three weeks, I've become really concerned about people's souls. But not only people's souls, but also the church's walk and how believers ought to walk in these end time days. And so I want to read this chapter. It's just a short chapter, but I think we need to read it. And then you'll see what we're, where we're coming from. Living in the light of Christ's coming. Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Catch that. For you know what commandments we give you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honour. So this is to do with our lifestyle. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. That's just a commandment from God alone. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk, there's the word walk again, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. And then what about this one? I read this at most funerals. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren or sisters, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede or prevent those who have fallen asleep, who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Tomorrow's will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a fantastic passage. 
an amazing chapter. In fact, every chapter in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, Paul mentions the coming of Jesus. In every chapter, he mentions the coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus. Do you know he's coming, brother and sister? The king is coming. And so this chapter tells me how we need to live or walk in the light of his coming, Christ's coming. The Lord Jesus is coming back and we need to be in right relationship with him and walking right before him. So come on, let's have a look at this. Living in the light of his coming. Paul says we are called to walk in verses 1 to 8 in holiness. That's to do with our lifestyle. How we live will reflect on Jesus or it will also retract from Jesus. So your lifestyle is important, how you live it. We are to walk, secondly, in verses 9 to 10, in harmony. We are to love one another. And that love is not just said, it's shown. Love is never passive, it's always demonstrative. So we're to walk in harmony. Thirdly, we're to walk in honesty. We're walking before people who are watching us and they're looking at us and they're listening to us. And you know, some of them may want to follow us, but we need to walk properly and honestly before them. First of all, before God. And secondly, before the world outside, because they want to know if we are real Christians. So walk in honesty. And also uh, in verses 13 to 18. We are to walk in hope. We have hope in this hopeless world. And our hope is not in material possessions. It's not in anything that we can attain or accomplish. Our hope is in the one who died on the cross. And rose again, the one that we have just remembered this morning, to thank him for what he's done for us. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, in our salvation, and also in his second coming, that we will rise to meet him in the air. So we're to walk in those four things, holiness, harmony, honesty, and hope. Let's do that. Let's have a look at that. Walk in holiness. The Christian life is a walk. In fact, Paul said to the Ephesians that we're to walk in love, Ephesians chapter 5. He said we're to walk as children of light, we're to walk in light, not darkness. And also he said that we're, we're to walk circumspectly, in other words, soberly, wisely and rightly. That's what we're to do as Christians. So how's your walk, brother? How's your walk, sister? How's our walk, people's church? Nobody? Because people are watching us. We're to walk in holiness. Do you know, it's not going to get better at the moment. It seems to be it's going to get worse. And people are fretful. People are frightened. People are really afraid. Do you know, mental health issues are increasing. Suicides are increasing because of this coronavirus. Brother and sister, listen, Jesus is with us. And he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. But it's our duty to walk with him and to walk like him and for him. So if it's going to get worse, then we need to stay closer to God. We need to be close to him and ask him. And you know, as we read these verses again in verse 1, listen to what it says. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. When we walk now, holiness is not this card by cardboard cutout of a saint or an ecclesiastical pomp, you know, performance. It's nothing to do with that. It. It's not outward show. It's inward holiness. And when it's inward, when the fear of the Lord is in your life, you want to walk right, you want to talk right, and you want to live right. And you want to do that. In front of him were pleasing God, not men. That was the problem with Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They wanted to please men. And so they hid for Jesus. They didn't come out into the open until he died on the cross. And then they came out publicly. But they were living as secret disciples. 
Don't live as a secret disciple. Live openly, publicly and personally for Jesus. Do you know, I believe in these days we need to have a closer walk with God because these days are evil and they're frightening and dangerous. So let's draw close to God. Listen to what he said. About more and more as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Listen, for you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. So Paul is giving them commandments to obey so that they can walk holy before Almighty God. For this is the will of God. Listen, your sanctification. What's sanctification? It just simply means being set apart for holy use. Set apart for God. That God can use you. Your sanctification. Now listen how he tells you to set yourself apart for God. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. Any illicit sexual act. Listen, you have to avoid and stay away from and abstain from. Now listen, I didn't say that. He said it in his word. And so we need to live in holiness for him. So avoid that in the name of Jesus and abstain from things that you know are wrong before God and he bless you. Notice in verse 4 that each of you, this is personal now, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. Listen, his own vessel in sanctification and honour. I want my life to be separated unto God but I also want my life to honour God. I want to have a testimony Listen, how to possess your own vessel. We're vessels. And you can fill your vessel for, with, with whatever you want. Or you can fill it with the presence of God and the things of God. Because whatever you're filled with will overflow in your life and it will be seen. So let's please and honour God. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of off and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. In other words, God sees what we're doing. And if we're doing anything wrong towards anybody else, God will bring us to that place where we need to confess and say, Lord, sorry, I'll not do that again. I'll repent of that. And that's what walking in holiness is. You're sensitive to God. You're not walking, looking over your shoulder. No, he's a loving father. He's a gracious God, but he wants you to walk in such a way that you're pleasing him. So please him, brother. Now listen, for God, verse 7, for God that did not call us to uncleanness, but unholiness, but unholiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. So when we ask him to fill us with the Holy Spirit, we're asking to fill us with holy things, holy desires. And so, brother and sister, we're to walk in holiness. Let's do that. And by the way, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 says, Because iniquity shall abound, the, law of, the love of many shall wax cold. There's going to be apostasy. Because iniquity lawlessness shall, shall abound people running wild the love of many shall wax cold so there are Christians who are going to fall into line with the world and run after the things of the world because of lawlessness around and we're not we're seeing that already in the Christian church all over the world even locally as well people are running after worldly things and worldly desires and the love of many is waxing cold as we speak. But listen, but he or she who endures to the end shall be saved. So you need to dig in. Come on, dig in, hold fast and keep on going on. So that's what we are to do. We are to please God and abound more and more. We are to obey his commandments. We are to glorify him and not ourselves. And we are to live for God and walk in holiness while we're doing that, living for him. So brother, how's your walk this morning? Are you walking in holiness? Are you following the Lord Jesus closely? Notice number two, we're to walk in harmony. Verses 9 to 10, 
But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. By this, Jesus said, but will all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Love is not passive. Love is always demonstrative. God demonstrated his love to us when he gave his only begotten son on the cross for us. He paid a price. He paid a price. His love was a price. He did it because he loved us and Jesus died. The son of God loved me and gave himself for me. That's the price that love was willing to pay in order to show how much we're loved. Notice but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. I, indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Do you see that? More and more. So let's do this more and more. Reach out and love the brothers and sisters. And some people will bite the hand off you, and some people may ignore you, because it happens. It's happened to me. You try to reach out and they just bite the nose off you or they snub you or even they turn away from you. It happens. But listen, that's not the stop. We don't have to stop doing this. We can still reach out with the hand of love and support brothers and sisters in Christ. So we're to walk in holiness. We're to walk in harmony. Come on. That's what I believe. The reason why the early church was birthed I believe Jesus told them to wait until the Holy Spirit came. The promise of the Father was to come, but they were to wait until it came. And notice what they were doing for the 10 days together. They were praying together. They were fellowshipping together. They were waiting together. And what happened? Because they were in one place, in one accord, they were in unity. They were in harmony. Then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house uh, where they were sitting. And then clothing tongues of fire rested upon each of them, 120 people, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So I believe that when there's unity, there the Lord commands the blessing. And you know, we're to walk not just in holiness, but we're to walk in harmony because harmony means that we're living what God says, loving one another in the name of Jesus. But we're also to walk in honesty. Now watch this one. Honesty, 11 and 12. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. Oh, I love that. Mind your own business. How many times have you heard that said? Mind your own business. Nothing to do with you. Don't get involved. Don't say nothing. Don't intervene. It's nothing to do with you. Listen, lead a quiet life to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, that you may lack nothing. Amen. We are to, we are to walk in honesty. And I love that. Brother and sister, I'm not interested what other people are doing. I'm interested what I'm doing. Because I have won an audience of one. And whatever other people are doing, that's their business. Remember on resurrection morning, Peter, uh, he, he was restored whenever Jesus addressed him. Do you love me three times at, uh, at the Sea of Tiberias? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know what? I love you. And then he said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my flock. And then Peter turned around and says, Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, what is that to you? You follow me. In other words, Peter, mind your own business. Keep your own house in order. Do your own thing, what I've asked you to do. Get on with it, but leave him alone. That's none of your business, what he's doing for me. You just do what I've asked you to do for me and get on with it in the name of Jesus. Would you say amen to that? So, brother, mind your own business. Sister, mind your own business. Church, let us mind our own business doesn't matter what our churches are doing. As long as we're doing what he wants us to do, walking in holiness, walking in harmony, and walking in honesty. So let's do that. Listen, why? Because the world outside are watching us. And if we're telling lies, if we're falling out, if we're cutting each other to shreds, 
if we are sandbagging each other, if we are sassing each other over the phone, listen, our families will listen to us. The people next door, our neighbours will hear us. And listen, the people that we work with will know we're different, we're hypocrites. But brother and sister, come on, let's walk in honesty before God and before others so that we can say, God, we want to honour you with our lives and our lifestyles and our love. Lastly, what about this one? Walk in hope. Walk in hope. Do you hear this? Now, I'll be mentioning this uh, tomorrow at Jim Morrison's funeral. At some point, I'll be, I'll be reading this portion of scripture at some point in the, at the funeral. Just a little tribute anyway. But I want to mention this because there's hope here for Myrtle and her family. And for everyone. Jill Seals were her mommy as well. The Carsons. All the people that we've taken funerals off over the last few weeks. We're just William Frizzell's another one. The Lord's been good to his people. So let's just read the last part. But I do not want you to be ignorant brothers and sisters or brother, brethren and sisters concerning those who have fallen asleep. That's those who have passed away. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Listen, listen to this. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we believe that, which we do, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who have gone before us, those who have passed away, those who sleep in Jesus, brothers and sisters in the Lord who have gone on before us. For this we say to you, listen, by the word of the Lord. This is not Paul speaking. This is inspirational. This is the word of the Lord that God gave him. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means prevent or precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. P.S. Comfort one another with these words. We are to walk in hope. Of course there is pain and loss. We saw that pain with Myrtle and her family with Jill and her family, with the Carson family, with the Frizzell family. We have seen that pain. We have felt the pain of such great loss and the trauma of it and the sadness and the grief. Listen, we're human beings. We just, we, we feel that sorrow when it's so deep and because it's someone so dear. But brother and sister, beyond that, we still in the midst of our sorrow we don't sorrow as others who have no hope because if we believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross he didn't stay there. He was buried in a tomb and he didn't stay there. On the third day he broke the chains of death, hell and the grave and he rose again. Jesus is alive and because he lives we shall live also not just in this life but in eternity. So we have hope beyond this world. We walk in hope. If Jesus, if we believe that Jesus is coming back, then that's our hope. That's our hope. We don't sorrow as others. Yes, we do sorrow. But it's not like others who have no hope and, and, the, and they're hopeless and they're helpless. Oh, brother and sister, we have hope. Jesus is coming back. He's returning the Jew, the, say, the Jew says the, the Messiah is coming. The Christian says the Messiah is returning. He already came once and he died for us and he rose again. And now he's coming back to receive us unto himself. So the, but when he comes, when he comes, listen to this friend. When he comes, it'll be too late for some. You need to get right now. You need to get ready now. When he comes, listen, brother and sister, let me encourage you. The Christian, those who have gone on before us, the Christian dead will rise first. 
they will rise first. Death is not the end. The grave is not final. There's a resurrection morning coming. Hallelujah. There's a resurrection morning coming. The Christian dead will rise first. Then the living believers, if we're still alive, then will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And then we'll meet the Lord in the air. We're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. You know what that means? Myrtle Morrison will meet Jim Morrison in the clouds. Jill will meet her mommy. Gertie Frisell will meet William Frisell. The Carson family will meet J James again. Come on, in the clouds. And you know the thoughtfulness of Jesus? Before we meet, I'll meet my mum and dad. I will meet my mother and father and we'll meet the child that we lost. Linda and I lost. We'll meet them in the clouds. Brother and sister, listen, the thoughtfulness of Jesus here. Before we meet the king, we'll meet our loved ones. Oh, the thoughtfulness of Jesus. I think that's beautiful. He, he feels for us. He's concerned for us because he knows what grief is. And you know, when Jesus comes, Yes, our loved ones will rise first and they'll, we'll, we'll be caught up together with them. The word caught up there means to seize away or to catch away suddenly. It means to lift us right up that we'll meet them in the clouds. Yes, we'll meet them in the clouds and then we will meet the Lord in the air. Brother and sister, isn't that amazing? What hope we have in this life and in the life of that is to come. I love that. But notice what it says. Listen to this. For the Lord himself. Will descend from heaven. With a shout. With the voice of the archangel. And the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Now brother and sister. Can I say this to you. I know that some people believe. In a silent rapture. But I have to be honest with you. There's nothing silent here. About a shout. There's nothing silent about the voice of the archangel. And there's certainly nothing silent about the trumpet of God. Do you know, everybody's going to hear it. That he's arrived. That he's come. And brother and sister, we want to be walking in hope when he comes. We want to be walking in holiness. In harmony. In honesty. And in hope. Oh, praise the Lord. Do you know something? There's going to be a reunion. There's going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. Isn't that brilliant? We're going to meet them in the clouds and then we'll all meet the Lord in the air. That's why Paul was able to write a PS at the end of it. Uh, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I think that's beautiful. Brother and sister, Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we will be with him forever. Not just for a while, but for all eternity. That's why I believe we need to live right and walk right in the light of Christ's coming. Brother and sister, are you walking in holiness? Are you walking in harmony? Or are you falling out with everybody? Are you walking in honesty? Is there anything deceitful in your life? Behind the scenes, secret sins? And are you walking in hope? Do you have that hope burning in your heart that one day you'll meet your loved ones in the clouds and then you'll meet your Saviour, your Lord and your King in the air? And so shall we always be with the Lord. Jesus is coming. He's coming to claim his people for himself. He's coming. And you know the question is. Are you ready? Brothers and sisters. When Jesus comes. When he returns. To the earth. When the dead in Christ rise. And we who are alive and remain. Are caught up together with them in the clouds. When Jesus comes. And we meet the Lord in the air. Folks listen. When that final trumpet sounds. When the shout of the Lord and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet sounds. That's it. That's it. No more calling. No more pleading. No more coaxing. No more wooing 
it's over. And if you're not ready, you're lost as you live. Listen, brother and sister, if you're not walking in holiness now, you can't do it then. If you're not walking in harmony with your brothers and sisters now, you can't do it then. If you're not walking in honesty now, you can't do it then. And if you haven't got hope now, you won't have it then. Brother and sister, Jesus is coming. Remember Matthew chapter 25, there was 10 virgins, five were foolish and five were wise. The wise ones, they trimmed their lamps, the foolish ones didn't. And at midnight, the bridegroom, the shout was, the bridegroom cometh. And so the foolish ones get out and they had to go and get oil for their lamps. By the time they get back, the five wives were brought in and the five foolish were left out. Five were shot out and five were shot in. Brother, sister, friend today, this is serious business. Jesus Christ is coming again and we need to walk in holiness. We need to walk in harmony. We need to walk in honesty and we can walk in this hope that he's given us. That one day he's coming back to receive us. But we have to be ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? You're listening to this message. Are you ready? It's a Sunday morning. We've broke bread together. Maybe you're listening to this message. And you are not walking in holiness before God. You know the things you're doing. You're not walking in harmony with other believers. We have tried to do that ourselves, myself and my father. We have tried to walk in harmony with others and some of them just don't want to know us. But we have tried. So we have reached out. Brother and sister, are you walking in harmony with others? Is there somebody you need to forgive? Or is there somebody you need to ask them to forgive you? Is there somebody you need to make up with? Well, do it before Jesus comes. Also, are you walking in honesty? Are you doing things that if Jesus came today, you'd be ashamed of. You would be afraid that he was. if he was to come today, you would be totally ashamed and disgraced. Well, come on, the king's coming. Never mind the virus. This virus will come and go. They'll find the antidote. But the king's coming. And when he comes, it'll be too late to sort things out. It'll be too late to make up. It'll be too late to change your lifestyle. Listen, it will be too late. Listen, five were shut out. Five were shut in. Which one will you be? Shut out or shut in? Brother and sister, come on. It's time to walk right. It's time to talk right. People are watching us. May they follow our examples. May we be able to point them to Jesus, even without words. May they follow our example, even watching us. May they see Jesus. Remember, they took knowledge of Peter and John, that they were ignorant fishermen. But they had been with Jesus. They knew the difference. Oh may they know the difference. In you and me. May they know the difference. In the people's church. Newton Abbey. May the Lord bless you today. If this message has spoken to you. And you need to change. Then change now. Don't put it off. Change today. Change right now. Listen. Jim Morrison is gone. Jim Morrison is gone in a second. Just like that. Nobody knew, only God. 58 years of age. What a sad loss. What a terrible grief for the Morrison family, but also for the People's Church family as well in Newton Abbey. We miss him. We've, we miss him. We're just all in shock. But listen, friend, Jim was ready. Jim was ready. Jim settled that in his salvation. He was sealed unto God in his 20s when he accepted Jesus what about you are you ready are you prepared to leave this life are you saved because there's no other way except the man be born again he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God there is no other way Jesus said it I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except by me so if you're coming you need to come through Jesus. He's the only saviour. I'm going to pray just now. Let's pray before we go. Father, we pray for Myrtle Morrison and her family today. We pray for Jim, Lord, his witness, his testimony, his wonderful example, 
his beautiful nature and also his wonderful friendship. Lord, we're going to miss him. How much more will Myrtle and the family miss him too? So Lord, will you comfort them in their great loss? Lord, will you shelter them in the arms of love? Will you draw them close to each other in these days? And will you draw them close to yourself? And Lord, would you let that hope be birthed in their hearts, Lord, that they may know Jesus as their saviour and may they know that one day they will see Jim again when Jesus comes again. Lord, we also remember the Smith family in Bally Castle, the wee girl Hannah and her, and her dad. We pray also for the tractor driver, Lord, who was part of the accident. Will you help him as well? Oh Lord, we just pray for all those who are sick and we pray, will you, will you be everything to each and every one of them? And Lord, we thank you for those who have got out of hospital and those who have had their operations. Bless your people today and glorify your lovely name because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you today. Have a great Lord's Day. And remember, live in the light of his coming. He's coming soon. Be ready. Oh, my God, my God.